Hello and welcome. You're watching France 24. We're going to cross over to the Netherlands at the tail end of a two day state visit by the French President Emmanuel Macron uh, with a joint press conference with the Dutch yeah, Prime Minister Mark Rutte. Grote dank daarvoor. En uh, ik wil natuurlijk uh, ook Emmanuel Macron opnieuw uh, welkom heten voor dit tweedaagse bezoek. Uh, we lopen naar het einde van het tweedaagse bezoek, maar het is echt een enorm succes. Um, en uh, wat wij uh, vanavond zullen doen nog uh, uh, in het Rijksmuseum is een gesprek hebben tussen uh, onze twee ministerraden. Uh, en dat zal een grote delegatie zijn van het Franse kabinet, van het uh, Nederlandse de kabinet, er zijn al verschillende ministers hier, de minister van Buitenlandse Zaken, ook hartelijk welkom. En uh, die regeringsconsultaties, uh, die passen ook echt bij het officiële staatsbezoek. Ja, daar kan je het horen, Mark Rutte, uh, uh, briefing the press on uh, the bilateral meetings that have been taking place. First state visit by a French president to the Netherlands in uh, 17 years. It's been overshadowed uh, by questions. Uh, over uh, that uh, interview that Emmanuel Macron made upon his return, during his return uh, to uh, France from China after another state visit last week. Uh, there, Macron ha had uh, said Europe should uh, uh, draw its own uh, path. And uh, he's doubled down on those remarks on the sidelines of this uh, uh, state visit to the Netherlands. He told reporters a short while ago that uh, France cannot be uh, a follower. He's made no apology for comments uh, that have angered uh, some of his NATO allies, including politicians uh, in the United this States. Uh, Never before have so many Vermeer works have been gathered together in one place. And the Louvre, we have the Dantelier uh, exhibited at the Rijksmuseum. There's, of course, another symbol of this uh, Franco Dutch cooperation with the uh, monumental work by Rembrandt that our countries have brought together, constantly traveling between the Louvre and the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam. So um, to sum up, our friendship is uh, strong and staunch, and it's all the more important that uh, there is uh, war and violence on our European continent, and it's important to have very good friends on the continent. It's more vital than ever at the beginning of the Russian invasion. We were side by side in support of Ukraine. I'd like to thank France, but also uh, Emmanuel Macron personally for his uh, commitment. And we see that uh, Putin is uh, gearing up for a long walk. Uh, his uh, uh, missile strikes and continue to bring additional equipment to the front. It's key that uh, jointly in Europe and in the US and elsewhere we uh, continue to assist uh, Ukraine as uh, long as uh, necessary. And in fact, we confirmed that during our talks. We have the support of our NATO partners that is equally essential, notably uh, that of the US. Without US support, it would be unthinkable for the Ukraine to resist uh, the Russian attack. We're doing our utmost so that uh, justice is uh, rendered. These uh, crimes must not go unpunished, and it's important to note that France and the Netherlands are at uh, one as regards uh, punishing this, uh, uh, these crimes. The war demonstrates how important it is to be part of a Europe that is resilient, speaking with one voice on the geopolitical stage. We need to be more independent in terms of energy supplies, raw materials and value-added technologies. All that is absolutely key when we see the environmental and uh, digital ambitions of the EU. We must, uh, of course, address our 
digital and climate ambitions. It's key that we um, have a geopolitical voice and be uh, leaders in terms of clean technology. We need, of course, to maintain our prosperity here in Europe. I'd also like to thank uh, France that is a true uh, leader in this uh, regard, and we must uh, get down to work and focus all our efforts in the uh, field of uh, boosting our sovereignty. I believe that since 2017, President Macron has been uh, very consistent in these plans uh, where uh, pursuing green growth, and we signed a sustainable innovation uh, growth pact, also supported by business. That is uh, key in order to um, tackle climate change. We must. Uh, ensure uh, mutual strengthening. And this state visit goes well beyond a symbolic visit, and that's the reason why these government-to-government -government consultations are of, uh, uh, absolutely uh, key. I'd like to thank you once again, Emmanuel Macron. We're very grateful to you uh, coming to visit us, and the president is accompanied by a an impressive uh, ministerial delegation, and I welcome the uh, continued discussions that we're holding, and we will uh, maintain the friendship between our two countries and uh, strengthen Europe. Thank you. Thank you, Prime Minister. Dear Mark, uh, ministers, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to begin by uh, thanking the mayor of Amsterdam for uh, welcoming um, us in her hometown and to thank the Dutch uh, authorities, of course the royal family, a new prime minister and your government for the uh, welcome extended to us uh, with my uh, spouse and the ministers since yesterday, where we really uh, sensed uh, the friendship and the strategic uh, closeness to move forward. We've uh, had a very uh, frank and warm discussion between two allied countries, founders of Europe, to move forward on the many issues you recall in the current context, that of war indeed with the uh, Prime Minister. We continued our discussions on our uh, continued support to Ukraine and also to avoid our sanctions being circumvented to military support of the country so that uh, no uh, crimes go unpunished and we need to strengthen the European defense industry. 200 Dutch soldiers deployed under French uh, command in Romania with Defense Minister will discuss discuss our defense cooperation ahead of the agreement to be signed next year and to further develop the European industrial base. And that demonstrates uh, this closeness. And I thank you for this uh, military commitment that, that you, after the one you decided in Sahel at our side a few years ago, <coughs> we share the same resolve to uh, affirm greater European sovereignty, and in the current context, our will is to have a European Union that emerges as a fully-fledged power that can increasingly decide for itself in terms of energy, R&D, uh, industrial solutions and defense. So this uh, agenda that we've uh, begun to uh, draw up at uh, Versailles at the Council Summit just over ago, we're implementing it uh, gradually, semiconductors, uh, the net zero industry uh, decided on uh, rare earths and that at a brisk pace. On this European progress, uh, we need to have a more integrated European market, continue national and European reforms. We need to maintain our competitiveness, uh, revive our ability to innovate, train the best talents, but uh, implement this strategic autonomy and also to have all the tech, so to speak, the rules and regulations that allow us to forge autonomy in all these areas. 
This is demonstrated through a visit, is uh, exemplified through our bilateral cooperation, opening up to our partners and rolling out this strategy very consistently. This visit is a success, uh, to my mind, through the broad partnerships that have been strengthened, transport, energy, new technologies, and will leave Amsterdam and The Hague with further projects that bind our two countries to continue to work together on energy, transport, uh, rail projects. Today, we have a pact for innovation and sustainable growth, which will set a framework to strengthen existing cooperation in terms of R&D. And we've also decided on joint work on semi uh, conductors, uh, quantum science, hydrogen, offshore wind, and in terms of transport, we'll work on uh, decarbonizing our aviation in this uh, pack that also be R&D in agriculture and farming part of the priorities. All this serving our strategic autonomy agenda that will allow us to continue to industrialize our countries, to decarbonize our industry, and to to achieve a strategic autonomy and to be less dependent on solutions that are mastered by those. We don't want to shut down our economies. We believe in open economies. We don't want to depend on some. We want to be less dependent overall. Our countries have key capabilities in terms of R&D and many of these uh, cutting edge technologies. And together, we want to be at the vanguard. And these two days have clearly demonstrated that, as you can say, it's a bilateral agenda serving a shared European ambition. It's precisely the same thing that links us in other areas, sports, tourism, or culture. The Prime Minister, recall, we decided uh, jointly to acquire very precious uh, works of art, of our heritage, and the Rijksmuseum and the Louvre will continue to develop joint uh, partnerships uh, through this visit. Uh, um, shared artist residences, uh, partnerships in various uh, areas. We're convinced that the arts culture is absolutely key in the friendship between our two countries, as well as sports. And we were uh, together on several sporting events. Prime Minister, I don't forget the Tour de France uh, that uh, set off from Utrecht back in 2015. I know the coming years will offer opportunities there again for further partnership. It's under the seal, this leap and economic uh, and industrial autonomy of Europe and friendship between our two countries, this state visit has been built. We had to wait 23 years for this state visit, but we didn't wait as long to seal, I would say, a personal and strategic friendship between us. You're one of the first European leaders who came back in June 2017, and that uh, <coughs> common pathway moving towards one another was very fruitful over the years. I believe we've achieved a lot of things together that weren't natural in France but important for the Netherlands. We were able to engage the Netherlands on a pathway not the most natural for the Netherlands but important for us. That's how trust is built and how Europe is built. Over six years, we're moving forward together very effectively and with a great deal of friendship. Uh, Prime Minister, dear Mark, I'd like to thank you not just for this state visit but for the trust and confidence forged between us and also the moments shared that allow us to move forward. Thank you very much for these two days and for the consultations we'll conduct together right after the visit. And I thank you also for everything we can do over the coming months and years. The first question from uh, Le Monde. Thank you, uh, Le Monde uh, newspaper. You mentioned jointly sovereignty, uh, European autonomy. Mr. Macron, your recent words on China, Taiwan, the position of Europe in that context was uh, of a nature to, to complicate or not the debate on the European strategic autonomy, notably 
vis-à-vis -vis China. I'd like to know a question for both of you, how France, the Netherlands and Europe would react in the event of an invasion of Taiwan by China. And perhaps a more personal question for Mr. Macron regarding um, Trump's uh, statement, who's accusing you of uh, licking the boots to remain polite of China. How do you respond to the uh, words of the former Republican president? Well, to begin, I would say that it's uh, continuously that Emmanuel and uh, myself have stated that we need to be part of a resilient Europe. And Europe must speak with a strong voice on the geopolitical stage. As I say from time to time, Europe must not be a playing field, but must be a player. And it's uh, true that we're not sufficiently impactful on the global stage. And obviously, we must adopt this same attitude in respect of China that is playing an increasingly assertive role. We see it in the South China Sea. We see it in respect of Taiwan. And I believe that uh, Europe is increasingly aware of these changes, uh, uh, to wit, uh, Ursula von der Leyen's uh, statements of late. We're focusing on our of resilience and uh, when it comes to raw materials we need to be less dependent and we need to protect our uh, cutting edge technologies and for Europe we must uh, choose for ourselves but it's equally important to realize that we have uh, close ties that bind us with the United States and that for good reasons it's a key partner when it comes to protection, to freedom, but Europe must also uh, be capable in terms of its uh, strategic autonomy to develop with other areas of the year. In other words, Europe must not be a playing field, but a player. I think we're both in agreement on that, and I recall that I delivered a speech in Zurich back in uh, 2019, and President Macron called me and said, that's another example, and we can, uh, from various angles, uh, uh, reflect in a similar way on the same uh, subject. That dates back to 2019, and it's further proof that we're moving forward. I believe that European strategic autonomy is not just a mere concept, it's becoming a reality, both politically and um, in reality. That's what we're building together, and we have to achieve that for ourselves and uh, for the outside world. Now that this uh, strategic autonomy, we must preserve Europe's unity in respect of China. That's why we adopted a single approach, uh, why um, rejecting the 17 plus 1 divisive formula. Back in 2019, I uh, involved President uh, Juncker and uh, Merkel have a trilateral format for that visit, uh, which uh, clearly demonstrates our European unit. In respect of the region, our strategic autonomy is deployed through the Indo-Pacific uh, strategy that we've uh, adopted, and we both support because of our long history in the region through the joint visit at this uh, visit. We are in favor of an open Indo-Pacific, and France's uh, position is identical to that of Europe for Taiwan. We're in favor of the status quo. It's constant, hasn't changed, a single China and the uh, search for a, a peaceful solution. That's what I tell the president and what is said everywhere. We haven't changed on the matter. And I spoke to President Biden before my trip to China that he, his determination is to avoid any escalation in spite of current tensions. We have our own approach, but we have a shared vision, an Indo-Pacific that is open, free, uh, shipping and cooperation. When I hear some doubting France's clarity in this regard, I invite them to look. The past few, we saw the Prérial frigate 
uh, sailing um, in the uh, route that was planned, clearly demonstrating our commitment for an open Indo-Pacific without provocation, without exhalation, with respect and clarity. Simply, I'm not contributing to the verbal escalation of some entailing urgently uh, for our policy, either fictional politics, what if, what would happen if, which would entail it happening or multiplying provocation. So France doesn't support provocation, doesn't support hypotheticals. Status quo, clarity and respect is the best ally of European strategic autonomy. That's why I won't contribute to comments and I have nothing to say of what the former President Trump had to say because he's contributing to this escalation that is sought by some. When he was president, I didn't comment on what he said and I won't do it now that he's no longer president. Question for the French president, your um, words about uh, Taiwan. What do you think of this um, anger in the United States? <coughs> And you mention an, an error or mistake. Do you regret your statements about uh, Taiwan? Is France still an ally of the United States? And a question for Prime Minister Rutter. Can the United States still count on uh, European allies? A uh, Dutch uh, MP made a statement in that regard. Well, perhaps my previous answer wasn't properly translated into Dutch. I'll repeat it. I followed closely the reactions of the White House, didn't uh, read that there were journalists' political uh, comments from people who were uh, seeking to escalate things, that's a certainty, sometimes the same, who had very escalatory words without my having to express myself. I saw a lot of measure and consistency in what the White House said because we have constant and close ties with them. The line is the one I said out. France is in favor of status quo in Taiwan. France uh, supports the single China policy and the search for a peaceful uh, solution to the situation for that matter. It's Europe position. It's a position that has always been compatible with the role of an ally. But it's precisely why I'm stressing the importance of strategic uh, autonomy. Ally doesn't mean being a vassal. Um, it's not because we uh, do things together that we can't think alone, that we're going to follow the people in that are the toughest in a country that's allied with us. When we look at the facts, France has lessons to be received from no one, be either in Ukraine, in Sahel, or in Taiwan. And I recall that by mentioning the presence of a French, French frigate these past few days in the region. So I'm very clear, but sometimes to recall the truths and not uh, to follow the ambient uh, noise. That's my fear, really, is that in a certain way, when we only hear the most extreme voices calling for escalation and that we overreact, what do we do? We arrive at the situation that we want to avoid. We don't want a conflict. We want the status quo. That's what I said to President Xi. I know it's the uh, resolve of President Biden. We want an open Indo-Pacific. We're in agreement on that. I'd like to add something and um, indicate our approach in Europe as the President indicated. It's uh, clear and obvious that there are uh, contacts with the U.S. President, Joe Biden. I was uh, in the United States in January visiting the U.S. President, and we um, spoke together with President Macron and Olaf Scholz, and there's very close coordination such that Europe is speaking with one voice, obviously. We can't agree um, on all the details, but on the broad geostrategic issues. Um, obviously, Europe can only have an influence on the global stage if we move forward together. 
President Macron has also been in um, telephone contact with President Biden before and after. Obviously, there are contacts uh, between allies, and we have to act as clear as possible. We know that the transatlantic uh, ties are essential, and at the same time, Europe wishes that its position uh, be clear on the on the global stage. I'd add one further point. It may seem that we um, fly to Washington or Beijing uh, to act, but it's all specifically coordinated. Good evening, uh, Prime Minister. Um, President, a question regarding the situation in France that briefly invited itself into this visit. The decision by the Constitutional Council, whatever it is, should it close the debate on the pensions reform? Will you be receiving the unions, as you indicated, and change your government team to um, launch the uh, remainder of your term of office? It's clear that the decision by the Constitutional Court on Friday will close a democratic uh, and constitutional pathway. The debates uh, are not set out by the court. They're in society. They'll continue to unfold, but I'd like that to uh, the court to clarify all the legal issues that are all legitimate, and it's for that reason that the executive has referred the matter to the um, Council, and I'll suggest to the unions that we have a discussion that will note there are disagreements with the executive, but also to embark on the next steps and to take account of the decision, whatever it may be, of the Constitutional uh, Council. The country must continue to move forward to work to address our challenges, those of climate change, uh, population aging, technological change, to produce, to fund our social model and to bet against, against the inequalities. That's our strategy. We have a lot of work ahead of us, and I urge the social partners to return. I know that the uh, period will uh, maintain the trace of the current disagreements, but I'll do that with a spirit of concord to move forward, whatever the decision, and I don't know what it is uh, before that, like you, before that decision is rendered. As to the rest, I won't answer uh, the question, but uh, you knew when you asked it. Day and today with demonstrators during your uh, trip. Did they affect the trip at all? And did they have any relation to what you were saying about the times of change in Europe and the anxiety and uh, the difficult choices that are being made? Look, I mean, I think it's, it's absolutely no normal in, uh, in this period of time to have this type of reactions. And our societies are very much anxious and we have a lot of debate being mixed uh, everywhere. So. I'm sure that we have our responsibility is sometimes to take decisions and bold decisions in the interest of our people for today and tomorrow. And how do you want me to advocate for this um, increasing strategic autonomy of Europe? How do you want me to advocate and convince Netherlands, but at that time as well Germany and others, to issue common debt during the pandemic crisis? If I don't reform France, I, I remain in the public finance situation we had six years ago. So I do endorse indeed to make these reforms because this is the counterpart of the credibility we have and uh, the fact that we engage others. I think this is because we passed the labor laws at the beginning of my first mandate and we completely streamline our economy and we get the first results that we could convince Germany to issue common debt three years later. And I think this is because we are passing reforms and converging with the others that we can ask them to converge to our philosophy and to deliver together common solutions. But I, you live in this country, you live in the Netherlands. I think if I ask you to pay the reform I decide not to deliver for my peaceful time, you will disagree at a point of time for good reasons. 
and and when I look at the situation of my public finance, I'm very proud of the, of the French social model. I do defend this French social model, but I think if we want to make it sustainable, we have to produce more. We have to reindustrialize the country, which is exactly what we are doing. We have to decrease unemployment, and we have to increase the quantity of work being delivered in the country. And this pension reform is part of it, with two objectives. Working more to deliver more wealth and share this one to finance our model and not to depend on the others and convince the others. And second, try to restore our situation of, uh, of public finance, which is diverging with a lot of other countries. I, I mean, I agree with you, we have a lot of reactions, but I didn't clearly hear the other solutions proposed by those who disagree with this reform. And it's not true that you can deal with climate change, you can finance your social model without passing this reform. Except if you say, I have a good solution, public deficits and increasing debt is the way to fix all my issues. You can make it on the short run. At a point of time, when your bankers suddenly wake up, this is a big issue. And we are not our own banker today. Could you just reflect on, on the same incidents? Of the same incidents and the same Ja, nee, natuurlijk. Ik, ik, uh, ik, ik zag natuurlijk. Uh, yes. Of course, I saw um, those events um, unfold. We invited uh, uh, France. We'd, of course, wish to avoid those unfortunate incidents. Uh, I fully agree that demonstrations uh, uh, need to be authorized even abroad, but it does in a uh, dignified uh, setting. And obviously, I uh, deplore. Uh, such uh, uh, demonstrative acts. And in the Netherlands, we're addressing major issues, and we have to introduce reforms to uh, prepare the future in the field of energy, climate change, defense, education. We must, of course, uh, embrace those reforms, and we see that with the uh, problem of nitrogen in the Netherlands, it's a very sensitive issue, and it's difficult to convince our citizens for that. But we have to prepare the future, and our countries must remain strong. And it's sometimes difficult to explain uh, since uh, uh, June or even indeed uh, uh, May. You were elected uh, back in 2017, and I traveled to Paris in June of that year. I'm full of admiration of what the president is doing for his country and for Europe. This brings this conference to the to an end. Thank you. You've been watching live remarks. Uh, the uh, French president in the company of uh, the Dutch prime minister, uh, Emmanuel Macron, uh, dogged uh, by the pension reform protests uh, back home. On Friday, the Constitutional Council here in this country will rule on their legality. And the remarks he made upon his return uh, from uh, China on uh, Taiwan, uh, saying how Europe had to chart its own uh, course. Uh, the French president uh, reiterating uh, uh, the uh, uh, notion that uh, uh, Europe must have, uh, quote, autonomy. Uh, the Dutch prime minister, Mark Rutte, agreeing with him, saying Europe must not be a playing field but a player.